Today we're going to be installing the BT Moto Velocity Stacks to the BMW M1000RR. This install video is going to be good for not only for the M1000RR, but for the S1000RR, S1000 Single R, and S1000XR. Of course, all of the new K66 and K67 uh, equipped models. Those are the newer models. We're also going to be providing a new sprint filter, which I'll show you how to install. Um, we're demanding more air from the motorcycle. So let's get the uh, OEM paper filter out of there and put this Sprint P08. It's a high flow air filter. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna wanna do is take off the top. To remove the top section here, you're gonna have to remove this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt, the three. And this is going to be a T25. Now T25 is this star looking uh, tool right here at Torx. So if you don't have a Torx set, and you have a BMW S1000R or M1000R or whatever BMW, Usually these are the bolts, uh, kind of bolts they use, so get a set of uh, Torx tools, and usually the T25 is what they use to secure the fairings. So let's get that done. Now that those are gone, this lifts up pretty easily. Right here, it's kind of pull. And there's some Velcro. There we go. It's not gonna wanna come up, but just pull it up and you can see right there. There are some clips right here and here, and then the Velcro. This is usually where people kind of get stuck and they go, I don't want to rip my bike apart. It's perfectly fine. It's how it's supposed to come up. Next, we're gonna move on to the side fairings here. In order to get the side fairings off, we're gonna have to pull the seat off. The seat is a single T25 bolt in the center. Comes right up, lift up, lift out. All right, to remove the side fairings here, it's pretty easy. All you gotta do is remove this T25 bolt and this T25 bolt, which I've already done. You can see it's still locked in there, so we have to go from the back here, undo that, pushes down, this pulled out, and then this whole thing pushes forward. Be careful when you push it forward because you don't want this to fall and hit that. And there you go, do that from both sides. Next, we're gonna be removing our tank here. That's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt here. It's gonna be a 13 millimeter bolt here on both sides. And we're gonna remove the breathers here off the tank first. These usually come off pretty easily. Uh, if this doesn't pop right off or you're having a really difficult time getting it, usually use a pair of pliers, gently put it around the end here and just kind of move it around. It'll get it off of the metal and you can pull it right off. All right, once you've gotten all that off, this tank will lift right off. Just like that, okay? Now, of course, the ECU is held by a little catch here, which it pulls right up from. I don't have to mess the ECU just yet. So I'm pulling this up, that's out. There's three attachments at the bottom here. So I usually prop the tank up on the side of the bike. It's cool if you use someone else too. Just be very careful if you prop it like this that the tank doesn't just fall over to the side of the bike. Um, so here, this is just a push. Pulls right out, there's a little bit of fuel that comes out. That's perfectly normal. I actually use a, um, a screwdriver to pull this right out and pull this right out. I've already done these already, so I for the purpose of the video, of course. Then the tank pulls right off. Go ahead and put this to the side. You can lay it right down flat in the bottom right there. Now we've finally gotten to the area we need to be. This is the air box right here, but it has all this electronic stuff on it. So we're gonna have to pull this off. So I'll show you the easiest way to do that now. First thing we're gonna do is remove the bolt right here, T25 for the ECU. All right, so this may look hard, but it's very easy to get around, okay? So there's a, there's a connector right here. Unplug that, move it out of the way. It has a little latch right there. We're just gonna move this right out of the way so it's not hitting anything. Perfect. Um, let me see. Now we've got mobility of the ECU itself. And disconnect the things that are easy. There's a valve down here. Right there, disconnect that. You may have a pair valve here. There's a connector that goes right there. Just use a screwdriver and pull that out of the way. If you don't have it, of course, just there's no reason to remove that whatsoever. Now I've got a little more mobility of the ECU here. Now the first thing we're gonna wanna do after all of that is start disconnecting these black um, torque screws. And I'll tell you what the size is here in a second, but there's a few of them and I'll show you exactly where they are. All right, so this black Torx here, there's a black Torx here, there's a black Torx here, here and here, and also here. So remove all of those and it's a T20. Once you remove all of those, go ahead and pull the injector clips, which I just push up with a screwdriver and pull out the connector itself. Oh, so that's kind of loose. 
There is a zip tie over here now we'll have to cut. All right, this is the zip tie on this side and this actually connects the wiring harness to the air box. So of course we gotta get rid of that. Be careful on cutting it, of course. You don't wanna cut the wire harness itself, that would be a complete disaster. Once you get the zip tie up, there is a connector under here. Once you pull the ECU up a little bit, that's hanging the entire harness up. Um, it's a simple push from the top down and it pulls right out, right there. That's for a servo motor. All right, with that wire out of there, you should be able to move this entire wiring harness, do it carefully, out of the way just like this, and off, <laughs> off to the side here. You don't have to disconnect the ECU, nothing. You can leave this entire harness intact, and now we have full access to the air box. First thing I would do is remove this hose, move that kind of out of the way there. Now we're gonna go ahead and access the fuel rail. For the fuel rail, there are four T20 bolts, just like we used to uh, remove the harness here. There's one, two, three, and four of them. Go ahead and remove all four of these. Once those bolts are out, you can go ahead and pull the rail up and up, and it comes out with the injectors. We can, of course, move this to the back, just like we did with the harness. Now we have even better access to the air box now. Now we can actually start disconnecting the air box itself. Two bolts at the top, two bolts at the bottom here. First one is a T30, and the top bolts here are T30s. Um, go ahead, this is the only side that has this, but remove this out of the way. So you get that breather out of there. And you just remove this very easily. Once you pull out there, that bolt, there will be this metal thing here. It's just kind of a spacer. Pull that out and just remember the orientation goes in on both sides. All right, so now we're gonna remove the bottom bolts here, the black ones on each side. This is a T40. So just do this on both sides. Okay, now that you've taken out both the bolts on both sides here, this should be movable. Yeah, very movable. Actually, mine comes out. So here's what else we're gonna have to do here. We're gonna pull this out. This just needs to be out of the bike. It's really on there. Okay, there you go. So push that to the side. Just make sure you don't hit it. And at the bottom of your bike is going to be a breather hose. And I'll try to get a close up here. So this is the part I'm talking about right here. Um, on mine, I have parts of the stage three here, which is actually a breather kit we're going to be offering. But right now, yours will probably have this with some kind of weird clamp thing. It looks a little bit like, I'd say this, right? It looks like a weird kind of mess right there. The best way to attack it and of course I'm not gonna do it here because this, this isn't the same kind of clamp, is I take a pair of pliers, hook it onto it, and twist it sideways, and that actually unseats it like that, so the clamp comes off. The clamp is reusable, so once you put everything back together again, you just kinda of clamp it back together with a pair of pliers, and it'll shoulder in again. All right, after all that, your air box should be able to pull right up and out. A reminder here, that hose we were talking about before that goes down there, Make sure you have like a paper towel or something ready because usually on bikes that holds a lot of oil and sometimes the oil just drip everywhere. Just make sure you have something ready for it. I pull this up pretty quickly, moves out, and now we're to the part we need to be, which is the air box itself. And that's the whole thing right there. Um, at the bottom of this, things to note, there's going to be this right here and this right here. These are just the where it sits onto um, the throttle body assembly. Make sure these rubber pieces, because they remove right out of here, make sure they stay where they are. Once you have the air box off, the first thing you wanna do is take the filter out, push these two tabs in. This piece comes out just like that. Filter assemblies here. This comes out pretty easily as well. Pull out from the top, put that to the side. Now that's, of course, that's when you switch out the OEM filter for the sprint filter. So now we've got the air box here. And depending on what model of bike you have, your air box will differ. Oh, there's the air box. Your air box may differ. So I have these white stacks here, and or white funnels here, and green at the bottom. That's the M1000RR stuff. Yours will probably just all look all black. That's the XR, single R, and double R of the S1000. All right, to pull these out, this is what we're gonna be doing next. I just pull them from the bottom, and they come right out like that. You can do that for all four of them. I don't know if you saw that, because I camera might have not catch it but there you go pull them out just like that do that for all four now we have one of the stacks here this is an m1000r stack and this is 
the M1000RR um, BT Moto Stack. So you can see when you put them side by side like this, um, the BT Moto one is definitely shaped a little bit differently to provide more air um, into the cylinder. So we're going to take these ones and we're going to take a screwdriver, pop this ring off, slide it in, and then pop it back on. So what I do to remove this here is I have the ring, and you can see this end of the ring, and there's a little side of it where you can slide the screwdriver under. I slide under there, move it, and then the whole ring pops right off just like that. To put it into the air box, I just take this, slide the stack in. You see that's in right there. Make sure it's fully seated. Now at the bottom, you'll see there's a way to get the ring on. And the ring, I usually just slide this one end of it and click in first. And I slowly slide the rest on. There we go. After you get the click in, you can see it's nice and secure. No more rubber components. All 3D lightweight composite. Do that for all four. All right, after you get all four in there, it should look something like this. All the snap rings in there, stacks in there. Now all you gotta do is replace the filter into the air box itself, and then put it all back together, and you're all wrapped up. That's it.